want to welcome you to Pastor's Point of View, number 261. Today is June 30th, 2023. My name is Dr. Andy Woods. I'm the pastor teacher here at Sugarland Bible Church. I'm back with my friend, colleague, fellow elder, associate pastor, Dr. Jim McGowan. And we have um, a prophecy update for people today. And here is our six part outline that we're gonna try to work our way through. And let's just go ahead and start with uh, the Middle East, the infamous Gog Magog invasion of the last days prophesied by Ezekiel in chapters 38 and 39, that prophecy given to Ezekiel 2,600 years ago. And wow. we believe of all of the prophecies in the Bible, this one probably more than any other I can think of is in play right now as God seems to be aggressively setting the stage for the fulfillment yes. of this prophecy. Yes. You'll notice from our map that we frequently refer to, it just it depicts there the various powers that will invade Israel in the last days according to Ezekiel's prophecy. And you'll notice that we have... Saudi Arabia circled, but there's no arrow towards Israel yes. as you have with these other nations. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is a prophecy that is oftentimes neglected by a lot of uh, prophecy teachers, but it's right there in your Bible. It's in Ezekiel 38 verse 13. What does that say? All right. Reading from the New American Standard Version 95 edition. Ezekiel 38, 13, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all its villages will say to you, have you come to capture spoil? Have you assembled your company to seize plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to capture great spoil? So on the uh, outworking of this invasion, it mentions there Sheba and Dedan. Now we understand Sheba and Dedan as Saudi Arabia. We've yes. covered that in prior <clears throat> programs why we believe that. But Sheba and Dedan or Saudi Arabia will not be involved in the invasion, but they will stage what some have called a lame protest. They actually speak up against the invasion, but they don't do anything tangible to stop it. And for the longest time, Bible teachers, commentators, prophecy experts have sort of scratched their heads, you know, wondering why is it that the Saudis um, are not going to be involved in the invasion, but rather will protest it. And we really haven't had much of an answer to this, you know, until modern, very, very modern events. And so this is why we found this article from the Jerusalem Post very interesting. It says the United States House of Representatives promotes a special envoy role to advance the Abraham Accords. The efforts to form the special position come as the United States works to normalize mm. relations yeah. between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And so the United States, under the auspices of what are called the Abraham Accords, is actually seeking to normalize relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And keep in mind what the Abraham Accords are. The Abraham Accords are not peace agreements. Right. Um, it's not the typical scenario where Israel makes a deal with some hostile power um, where we're going to give up a little bit of land in mm -hmm. exchange for the illusory yeah. promise of peace. These are, the Abraham Accords are not peace treaties. These are normalization agreements right. where all an Islamic country has to do is to acknowledge Israel's existence. Yes. You know, Israel doesn't even appear on a lot of Islamic <laughs> Middle Eastern Very maps. True. And then Israel in exchange for that promise opens up to that nation, the four T's, something we call trade, tourism, travel, and technology. There have been many, many countries that have entered into, of recent times, the Abraham Accords. I'm thinking of Morocco, uh, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, and all the analysts say the Saudis are the next group to fall under the jurisdiction of the Abraham Accords. Yeah. And in fact, in our own United States House of Representatives, um, a legislation has been passed promoting a special envoy 
And that special envoy's role is to normalize relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And now for the first time you have an explanation as to why the Saudis won't like the invasion mm -hmm. because they're benefiting from right, Israel right. and will speak up on behalf of Israel. And so we're literally living in a time period where the tiny specifics of God's word <laughs> yes. are being fulfilled. Yes. Uh, everything is is ripe for this Gog Magog invasion, mm. including the minute details found in Ezekiel 38, mm. verse 13. Yes. But anyway, help us with that article. The U.S. House of Representatives have passed a bipartisan bill to create the diplomatic position of ambassador for the Abraham Accords to help advance Israel's normalization with its Arab neighbors, particularly with Saudi Arabia. The Biden administration is actively seeking to expand the accords created under the Trump administration by which Israel normalized its ties with the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan. The Biden administration has focused on a normalization deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. See, what role is the United States playing to set the stage for the end time scenario where they're brokering mm -hmm. um, an arrangement yeah. whereby the relationship between the Saudis and the Ara Israelis will be normalized, which mm -hmm. is setting the stage for Ezekiel 38 verse 13. Would you add anything uh, to we're that? We're facilitating prophecy, aren't we? <laughs> it's sure, we sure are. Um, let's go to our second category here. It deals with the kings of the east and let's look at this chart here that says tribulation judgments and here we're speaking of uh, trumpet judgment number six and bowl judgment number six. Mm -hmm. What does trumpet judgment number six say? Would you mind reading Revelation 9 verse 14 and verse 16? All right, Revelation chapter 9 verses 13, or excuse me, 14 and 16. Again, reading from the New American Standard 95 update. One saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And then verse 16, and the number of the armies of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. Now let's throw into the mix the sixth bowl judgment found in Revelation 16 verse 12. What does that say? Revelation 16 12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river the Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. Now, as I'm looking at trumpet six and bowl six, I'm seeing a process. Mm. Trumpet six, beginning of the process, bowl six, end of the process. And what is this process describing? It's mm. describing a massive army of yes. 200 million. Wow. Now, keep in mind, when John saw this prophecy back in the first century, there weren't even 200 million people on the planet. That's right. But he saw this giant power um, coming from the east. In fact, here's a map here. We've got the Euphrates River circled. This giant power from the remote east would pass through the Euphrates, which would be supernaturally dried up to prepare the way. The Euphrates, of course, is that point of demarcation that separates the Middle East mm -hmm. from the remote East. Yes. So here comes this giant army of 200 million into the Middle East. They're moving into Northern Israel for the final war mm -hmm. or the final battle, you know, called the Battle of Armageddon. And as they're making their way, the Euphrates River is supernaturally dried up and they end up, this giant army from the remote East kills a third of mankind. Wow. Now, the issue becomes, well, who is this giant army from the remote East? Mm -hmm. Dr. John Walvoord in his 1966 Revelation commentary said, keep your eye on China. Yes. Uh, would you mind reading the last sentence there of Walvoord's uh, 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 comments? Sure. The rising power of parts of the Orient in our day in countries such as Japan, China, India, as well as lesser nations, makes such an invasion a reasonable prediction. He said in 66, keep your eye on Japan, mm -hmm. India, and then he throws into the mix here, China. Yes. Now, I find this very, very interesting because China is in the news constantly. All the time. Um, even our own 
administration is being, you know, accused and critiqued being beholden to Chinese interests right. rather than American national interest. You have uh, an individual named uh, Saulwell, if I'm pronouncing his name right, that was actually having an affair, mm -hmm. even though he was in an important um, committee there in the House of Representatives, having an affair yep. with a Chinese spy. Um, China I I is everywhere. Now, the aggressiveness of China, I think, is prophetically significant because mm -hmm. China is potentially a player in the end times scenario as we've yeah. tried to describe. So anything in China related to China in the news and her belligerence and her aggressiveness, we believe is prophetically significant. Amen. So you'll notice this article here from Reuters.com, June 20th, 2023. It says, China plans a new military, mm. okay, military mm -hmm. training facility in Cuba, the Wall Street Journal reports. Help us with that article. China and Cuba are negotiating to establish a new joint military training facility on the island, sparking alarm in the U.S. that it could lead to the stationing of Chinese troops and other security operations just a hundred miles off Florida's coast, the Wall Street Journal reported on Tuesday, citing current and former U.S. officials. So Chinese troops stationed 100 miles off of Florida's coast mm -hmm. in Cuba. I guess I would ask, Brother Jim, whatever happened to the Monroe Doctrine, yes, which sir. is the idea that we're not going to have you know, foreign um, hostile colonization in the Western Hemisphere. Um, what ever happened to what we learned in the in the Cuban Missile Crisis exactly. back in the days of JFK, early 1960s, yes. where the yes. Soviets were actually building, you know, military bases and that kind of thing in oh. Cuba, and JFK, you know, in what's called the Cuban Missile Crisis, stood mm -hmm. up to it. Yep. I mean, if if we were upset with the then the Soviet Union doing that kind of thing mm -hmm. in Cuba, why are we giving China here? you know, a free pass. Absolutely. It, it doesn't seem to make Well, you know, we're going to have to apologize to Russia if this happens. Yeah. And earlier off the air, you said China is actually a bigger threat to the United States oh, yes. than Russia. Why would you say that? Well, because look at how they have, you know, infiltrated themselves into every aspect of American culture. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like, well, what's the big deal if they come into Cuba? Yeah. And you even have guys in the NBA, you know, like Steve Kerr, mm -hmm. For example, coach of one of our NBA teams, you know, actually a couple of years back, you know, sort of marginalizing the role of China mm -hmm. in, uh, and her human rights violations, right. you know, on the world on the world stage. So this Chinese belligerence, this Chinese aggressiveness, is it not? We would think stage setting for the end time scenario. It, it's Absolutely. just another another clue Absolutely. of the unique time period that we're living in. Um, and that takes us to another article here on the same subject, the Gateway Pundit, June 19th, 2023, quote, quoting Blinken of the Biden administration, we do not support Taiwan independence. Wow. Uh, close quote. Tony Blinken gives the green light to the Chai Coms to invade mm -hmm. Taiwan. There's actually an embedded video in this article. People can grab it and watch the video if they want to. But, you know, it's sort of interesting how in the post-Trump world, a lot of our bullies are seem to be on the world stage getting larger appetites. Yes. Um, you've got Russia moving into the Ukraine. And we believe that it's just a matter of time, given the current state of things that China is going to roll right into Taiwan. And as that happens, mm. that's going to have a wow. negative effect on the American economy yes. here at home because a lot of our microchip technology, as I understand it, comes from Taiwan. Yeah. And it's all in connected and embedded into our devices that we are now dependent upon. And now China uh, we think is on the precipice of rolling into Taiwan. And here is Blinken of the Biden administration playing what we used to call in basketball matador defense, 
which is no defense at all, yeah. and giving them the green light to just go right ahead and invade. Yeah. Um, what does that article say? Secretary of State Tony Blinken made this announcement from, of all places, mainland <laughs> China. And he's quoting here, he says, we do not support Taiwan independence. And it goes on and says, this was a quick turnaround from Biden's promise to use U.S. troops to defend Taiwan from China in September 2022 and back in May 2022. So as late as September of last year, um, the American foreign policy was the exact opposite. We're wow. going to protect Taiwan. And now all of a sudden, Blinken goes to China and does an absolute 180 and completely and totally reverses himself. And whether you're talking about mm. Taiwan on the precipice or China, rather, on the precipice of invading Taiwan, whether you're talking about China building military facilities 90 miles off the coast of Cuba, whether you're talking about Solwell sleeping with a uh, Chinese spy, um, what all of this is conveying is China is on the warpath. Yes, sir. Their goal is global domination. And this is exactly what Bible prophecy, if we're interpreting it right, seems to indicate for the end of the age. What would you add to all of that? Well, you look at this article and once again, why, why wouldn't China feel emboldened to do what it's doing yeah. when it has the Secretary of State making these kind of statements. Yeah, playing matador mm. defense. Let's go to our third major category here that deals with the global economy. Our biblical entry point when we discuss the global economy is Revelation 13, 16 through 18. What does that say? Revelation 13, 16 through 18. And he causes all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. Now there's lots of things to talk about here, such as receiving an insignia onto the body to participate into the global economy of the future. We're going to talk about that issue uh, a little bit later. But here, I just want people to understand that beyond this insignia that we have a tendency to focus on in what's called the mark of the beast, it also anticipates a global economy. Yes. Because it says no one can buy or sell. Right. So it's talking about some sort of global control, global economic system that transcends the tiny individual nation states. Right. It's, it's an economy that is controlled by world powers. And with all of that being said, we think the technology is rapidly moving into place Indeed. to push us in the direction of this global economic control. So you'll notice this article from Reuters June the 19th, 2020, it says the IMF, that stands for the International Monetary Fund, which is not a, an American organization. Okay, right. this is a transnational organization. The IMF is working on global central bank digital currency platform. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been talking a lot on our programs about CBDCs that are being rolled out eventually. Yes here in the United States of America, this is not dealing with a national CBDC. Right. This is dealing with a global one world CBDCs, which will digitize all of our transactions and move us in a cashless direction. What does that uh, article say? All right, the International Monetary Fund is working on a platform for central bank digital currencies to enable transactions between countries, IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva said on Monday, quoting, CBDCs should not be fragmented national propositions. <laughs> to have more efficient and fairer transactions, we need systems that connect countries. We need interoperability, Georgieva told a conference attended by African central banks in Rabat, Morocco, quoting again, 
For this reason, at the IMF, we are working on the concept of a global CBDC platform, she said. The IMF wants central banks to agree on a common regulatory framework for digital currencies that will allow global interoperability. And there's the key buzzword. There it is. Global interoperability. It talks here about CBC, CBDCs should not be fragmented to right. national mm -hmm. propositions. Yep. And so this is pushing us in the direction of not just global governance, but global economics, which is exactly what the Bible says will envelop the earth at the end of the age. But it, isn't this sort of the pattern, though, we normally see? Because what's been happening has been the push for the CBDCs just at a national level. Yeah, we got to get those in place. Mm -hmm. But then once those are in place, isn't it just a step away from yeah. making it a global yeah. economy? And as they're pushing the national agenda, it's kind of like, oh, surprise, did we mention uh, this yeah. is going to be... Um, you know, globalized yeah. somewhere by a bunch of people that you don't even know. That's right. That you don't even elect, that can click, flick a switch and lock you out of the system if you aren't advancing the government narrative. That's right. With all of that being said, um, what we believe will happen is the United States of America will not be a leader or the leader of this global right. economy. We think that largely because of this statue here that Nebuchadnezzar saw Daniel saw it too, and Daniel too, and Daniel gave the interpretation. But the pertinent parts for our purposes are the feet mixed with iron and clay. The feet mixed with iron and clay, ten toes, is the future empire of the Antichrist. Yes. And that's the empire that's going to be instantaneously, suddenly, cataclysmically overthrown by the kingdom of Jesus Praise at the Lord. end of the seven year tribulation period, that stone cut without human hands that mm. grows and grows and grows and fills the entire earth. Now, mm -hmm. I know this is gonna sound deeply profound, Brother Jim, but in a statue like this, the feet are connected to the legs. Yes, sir. And That's just we, good anatomy. <laughs> that's right. And <laughs> we believe that the legs of iron would represent ancient Rome, mm -hmm. the Eastern, and Western divisions of ancient Rome. So the feet connected to the legs, speaking of the future kingdom of the Antichrist, will also arise out of the cultural inheritance of ancient Rome. Yes. This becomes one of the reasons why, looking at our Gog Magog map again, you don't see the United States of America in Bible prophecy. Right. You see the Saudis as we mentioned before, protesting the invasion of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Mm -hmm. But you really don't see the United States of America rushing to the rescue. Now, what we think is paving the way for the decline of the United States and a Eurocentric global empire, one of the things is something called the BRICS banking system. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, B R I C. S, the an acronym for BRICS, and basically what they're doing is more and more nations are joining this, is they are essentially coming up with a currency to dump the dollar. Exactly. In other words, mm -hmm. the dollar is not going to be the key source of currency, the leader of the world anymore. It's going to be some new currency that these nations are getting together to develop, and they're dumping the dollar in the process. And as this is happening, this now becomes part of the explanation why our American dollar is really not what, it's not worth what it used to right. be worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, when your doctor tells you you're as healthy as a dollar, um, you might want <laughs> to get a little worried. <laughs> because get serious. Yeah, because <laughs> our, do our dollar is really not worth what it used to be. No. That's triggering a lot of the inflationary pressure that the United States is under. It's related to this BRICS banking system. And we think that this BRICS banking system is moving the economic power away from yes. the United States here in the West to some sort of Eurocentric empire arising out of the cultural inheritance of ancient Rome, which is right on target with yes. what Bible prophecy sure predicts is. concerning the end of the age. So that's why we found this particular article from the global Times, very interesting, June the 14th, 2023. It deals with Macron in France 
I guess the BRICS Summit is going to meet in August, and he wants an invitation yeah. to the BRICS Summit. The article says this idea is bold and innovative. Mm. And what does that article say? According to French media reports, French President Emmanuel Macron has asked South African President Cyril Ramaphosa for an invitation to the BRICS Summit scheduled for August. The, uh, this matter has demonstrated the enormous influence of the BRICS cooperation mechanism. Different from a small circle like the Group of Seven, the BRICS mechanism exists as an emerging platform for global governance. Emerging platform for global governance. There it is. That may be the economic future of our world. And mm. Macron of France wants a piece of the action. Yes, sir. Make sure I'm invited to this. He's begging for entry. Yeah. And with all of that being said, let's mm. go to our... Next category, our fourth category, Mark of the Beast Technology. Let's reread, if we could, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. All right, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. And he causes all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the freemen and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. So this is not just talking about global economy. It's talking about some kind of insignia yeah. that people must receive, and I appreciated your pronunciation, on... Mm -hmm. The right hand or the forehead. Yep. Now, the Greek word for on here is the preposition epi. It is used and not the preposition uper, which means underneath. Mm -hmm. You know, from that word uper, we get actually the word hype, hyper or hypo, hyper, I guess, hypo, hyperdermic, you know, beneath the skin. Yeah. Um, that's not what the Greek preposition is. It's epi or on the skin. And so as we've talked about the rapidly advancing Mark of the Beast technology, we've talked some about, you know, microchips that are inserted into people. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you sit and you, you kind of scratch your head and you wonder, well, wait a minute, those are things that go under the skin. Mm -hmm. This is actually talking about something that is on the skin. Yes. And so with all of that being said, we have this very interesting article from spectrum.ieee.org. June 12th, 2023, it deals with the technology of nano tattoos <laughs> wow. that don't need batteries or wires. Mm. What does that article say? Researchers at two institutions in Istanbul have created nano tattoos capable of passive wireless communications with nearby devices without the need for external power sources such as batteries. The tattoos are composed of two inks, a zinc oxide ink containing embedded nanowires atop a graphene aerogel conductive ink. The two inks are painted, painted onto the skin simultaneously via separate needles. The tattoo's wireless networking infrastructure uses a smartphone to bounce signals off the tattoo and receive data with a broadband modem as a helper device. Now, let's keep in mind here that we're not saying this is the mark of the beast. Correct. Because we don't have the beast yet. But prophecies are such that they're not filled in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. The technology has to be in place to fulfill ultimately what Revelation 13, 16 through 18 says. And so that's the attitude that we have when we look at news items like this. It's stage setting. Absolutely. Uh, for the mark of the beast. It's interesting how technology always seems to be inching us towards what the Bible says. It never <laughs> seems to do an about face. That's exactly right. Go the opposite way. So this is something on the skin. Mm -hmm. And that would resolve the upper mm -hmm. epi issue. It also is something that is, if I'm understanding the article right, independently 
generated in terms of energy. So it doesn't have to be recharged, right, right. replugged in, that kind of thing. And it's something that, that hooks you up to the world, much like an iPhone you know, hooks you up to the world. Mm -hmm. It's just on the skin. Now, I find it very interesting, wow. Brother Jim, and I'm not a legalist, and I don't want to get on people's cases for tattoos. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is I've never seen a generation like the current younger generation that is so open to yeah. putting insignias or marks on the skin. Right. In fact, mm -hmm. it's sort of like if you're not doing that, you're not you're not really part of the in crowd that's, anymore. That's true. And when I was coming of age, there were people that had tattoos, but it wasn't mainstreamed, you know, right. at all. Right. And now the whole practice is mainstreamed. So we have a whole generation that's almost desensitized to taking things on the skin. Absolutely right. And now the technology is in place for it. Would yeah. you add anything to that? Well, I mean, that was a point I was thinking about also, you know, it's less invasive than having mm -hmm. something under the skin, right? Uh, it's more convenient because you just spray it on. And yeah. here's our society that's completely ready, willing, and able to accept tattoos. Yeah. Now, along these same lines in terms of technology, we have Obama. <laughs> Do we have to? I mean, yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> understand Obama. I really don't. Well, I understand him from a power perspective. <clears throat> yeah. But I've never seen a pre an ex-president hang around Washington, D.C. so I'm much. I'm telling you. I mean, didn't George Washington leave? You know, they wanted to make George Washington king. They did. And he said, we already had a King George. We just fought a war over that. That's exactly right. He turned right. it down and he went back to his farm. You know, these guys, they never leave. Um, it's almost like Obama is, is ruling through uh, our current president, uh, uh, Biden. And here is Obama in a recent uh, podcast with... David Axelrod, which you might remember was his campaign manager when mm -hmm. Obama was running for president. And Obama said, we need digital fingerprints to fight misinformation. <laughs> now, folks, I want you to understand that every time you see the word misinformation from these types of people, just cross that out mm -hmm. and write in the word censorship. Yeah. We don't yeah. like information and data getting out there that goes against the government narrative. And what he is saying is we need to fight this misinformation, which is now online, on social media, etc. And we have the technology to pull it off, right. which fits very nicely into our mark of the beast technology that we're it discussing sure here. So what does that article say? There is a need to develop digital fingerprints to fight against an increasing level of misinformation and distinguish between true and misleading news, former President Barack Obama said on a new edition of David Axelrod's The Axe Files. The former president said that technology is here now. Stop misinformation censorship in other words and the part of this that jumped out to me is the technology is here to do it mm -hmm. what could he be referring to <laughs> and so we have this next article from Breit breitbart june 19th 2023 it says the un unveils an automatic automated fact checking here tool. we go <laughs> to counter what disinformation of yeah. course mm -hmm. with big tech and George Soros, mm -hmm. what do we know about George Soros, mm -hmm. the quintessential globalist yep. uh, in his organizations um, paying the money for this? What's yep. that article about? The United Nations has unveiled an automated fact-checking service to counter so-called disinformation and hate speech on the Internet in a project partnered with big tech and Soros-funded organizations. In response to what they brand as online information pollution, which they claim is a global challenge, the United Nations Development Program has launched its iVerify platform to counter alleged disinformation and hate speech. The UN said that the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists and the Independent Radio Network will use the tool to strengthen national cap capacity to proactively identify and respond to misinformation, disinformation, and hate speech through leveraging the capabilities of artificial intelligence. The automated system will flag potentially false or 
harmful conduct to be reviewed by a team of fact checkers who will be funded in part by the governments of Canada, Ireland, Iceland, and the European Union. The UN program has already received some pushback with Canadian professor Jordan Peterson describing the automated fact-checking system as an Orwellian nightmare unfolding in real time courtesy of the globalist centralizers. The only voice of common sense and reason in this whole article is uh, Can Canadian professor Jordan Peterson. Wow who describes this technology as an Orwellian nightmare mm -hmm. unfolding in real time, courtesy of the globalist centralizers. The truth of the matter is that now of us, we're, all of us are so dependent on, on online sources of information. The technology is now in place to simply cut people out of the flow of information that happen to articulate a perspective that goes against the globalist centralizers, you know, government narrative. And that's what Obama is saying. Let's yeah. use it. Let's use it in this next election cycle because the technology to do this is alive and well in here. What would you yeah. add? Well, the only thing I would add is that uh, I think Canadians that are listening to this broadcast <laughs> ought to consider throwing the bum out that they currently have in the presidency and maybe look at Jordan Peterson as someone to, to uh, put in that position. Amen to that. And if Canada is now the standard for the rest of the world, just look at the uh, totalitarian uh, uh, overreach oh, that, that is now happening through uh, Justin Trudeau. So you're dealing with it's a terrible. bunch of people that don't believe in the free flow of ideas. Exactly. And now they have the technology in place for stopping disinformation, which is just another term for, for censorship. Right. And so welcome to uh, the New World Order. Yes. Speaking of which, let's move here to number five, global religion. Would you mind reading Revelation chapter 13, verse 15? <clears throat> Revelation thirteen fifteen, And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause many, as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Now here's another prophetic head scratcher. Uh, the Antichrist midway through the tribulation <laughs> period is going to set up an image of the beast that speaks and compels worship. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is religious, sure uh, is. what this talking statue does. You'll notice there in Revelation 13, verse 15, the word worship, it's the Greek word proskuneo. Yes. It's used in Matthew 2, 2 concerning the wise men that came to seek the Christ child. It says, for we saw his star in the east and we have come to worship him. That's proskuneo. Yes. That's used in Revelation 13, verse 4. They worshipped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast. It's used in Revelation 13, verse 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Same Greek word. Yeah. And then you go down to Revelation 13, verse 12. And it says, he makes all the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. So this is apparently a talking statue compelling worship. Yes. Um, now, in our prior PPOV, I think it was 260, we talked about how AI, artificial intelligence, potentially is leading the, the way right. for, for all of this to happen. Right. Of course, John, when he saw this, doesn't use the word artificial intelligence because he wouldn't know what that those words mean. He was just right. told to write mm -hmm. down what he saw in a vision on the island of Patmos at the end of the first century. But we now have an artificial intelligence leading worship services, as we've documented. Yes, that's right. And now we have this article here, Brother Jim, from uh, Fox News, June 19th, 2023, about an AI talking Jesus. <laughs> wow. And you can bring his image up via computers. <laughs> And ask him all kinds of things about your spiritual life, about potential marriage, dating, any issue that used to go to your pastor to mm -hmm. talk about. You can now talk to this image, and the image actually has the name Jesus. And wow. what does that article say? A chat bot version of Jesus Christ called Ask Jesus 
is streaming on the gaming platform Twitch, and it stands ready to answer questions from humans on anything from morality issues to the video game Fortnite to super-powered rodents shown with wavy brown hair and a beatific expression accompanied by a calm, well-modulated voice. AI Jesus calls users on the platform by name and appears to consider with care each question asked as YouTube videos of live streams reveal. Now, the thing to understand about the expression Antichrist is basically, as I understand it, it means in the place of Christ. Mm -hmm. Sure can. Uh, it's, a, it's another Jesus. Right. And doesn't the Bible over and over again warn us of another Jesus? Oh, what Lord. does Matthew 24, verse 5 say? Matthew 24, verse 5, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. And what does Matthew 24, 24 say? Matthew 24, 24. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Now, as we look at this list, the first six seal judgments, the very first seal judgment is a false Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. A rider on a white horse. And when you look at the chart here entitled Matthew 24 and Revelation 6 parallels, you see that that false Christ of Revelation 6 verse 2 has a parallel with the first birth pang, which you just, just read. Yeah. So prophetic scripture is warning us over and over again against another Christ, yes. an antichrist, something, someone coming in the place of the true Christ. We have another warning in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. What does that say? 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. So it says very clearly there, another Jesus. Yeah, it sure does. Just like the prior verses that you read indicate false Christs. Yes. Or people coming and saying, I am the Christ. Mm -hmm. So when you have um, a talking statue, compelling worship, what I'm suggesting is what we're starting to learn about artificial intelligence could pave the way you know, for the fulfillment of that prophecy. Because we now have scenarios in place where these, um, I, don't, I don't know what you want to call them, uh, artificial intelligence uh, icons, um, avatars mm -hmm. yep. are now leading people, whether it's church services that we saw last week in Germany, or whether it's Jesus giving people spiritual uh, advice. These sort of animated artificial intelligence type things are now leading people in the realm of spirituality. That's right. And that's exactly what Revelation 13 verse 15 says yes, is going to manifest itself at the end of time. Absolutely. Um, would you add anything to that? I, well, again, I just see this stepping stone process here in America where we've seen, we've, we've gone from this idea of an avatar where we've actually had entire movies that were done without real actors. Yes. And, and so, you know, we're preparing the populace for this idea of a potential AI Jesus down the road, right? Yeah, in fact, one of our elders here, our founding elders here at Sugarland Bible Church, told me a story about how his son invited him to attend church somewhere else. And um, after the church service was over, you know, they were walking to the car or getting in the car to drive home, and the son asked the father, well, what did you think about the church service? Did you like our pastor? And our founding elders said, yeah, the pastor w was fine. And the son said, well, did you know that wasn't the true pastor up there? Mm. Now, this founding elder is no dumb dumb. He's got a background in engineering and all kinds of things. And he sat there through the whole service, um, not understanding that the man preaching behind the pulpit was not an actual human being, but was an, was, was an image made to look just like a human being. Oh my goodness. Now this was, uh, this experience happened maybe five to 10 years ago. Oh my goodness. And this is, this is the ability that 
artificial intelligence and technology has to perform mm. in the area of religion. And I'm thinking maybe that's what John saw but couldn't put into first century vocabulary sure. when he recorded for us Revelation 13, verse 15. Mm. Well, for this, lots to talk about there, but for the sake of time, let's just go to our last category here. Sodom's second coming. Jesus made a prediction in Luke 17, verses 28 through 30. What did he predict there? Luke 17, 28 through 30. Uh, it was the same as happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. But on the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. So if you want to know what the moral climate of the world is going to be like before yep. Jesus comes back, just look at the days of Lot. Yes. What was going on in the days of Lot, Brother Jim? Would you mind reading Genesis 19, verses 7 through 9? All right, Genesis 19, verses 7 through 9. And uh, it says, Please, my brothers, do not act wickedly. This is Lot speaking. Mm -hmm. Now look, I have two daughters who have not had relations with any man. Please let me bring them to you and do, not, and do to them whatever you like. Only do not do anything to these men because they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, Get out of the way. They also said, This one came in as a foreigner and already he is acting like a judge. <laughs> Now we will treat you worse than them. So they pressed hard against Lot and moved forward to break the door. Don't judge our lifestyle. That's right. See the word judge here? That's what it says. Um, and anybody that would suggest anything contrary to the homosexual lifestyle mm -hmm. in the days of Lot were re reacted against in yes. a physically violent way. Mm -hmm. And... If the Bible means what it says and says what it means, Jesus says that same spirit, that same mindset yeah. is going to globally envelop the earth just yeah. before he comes back. In fact, there's a prophecy about it in Revelation 11 and verse 8. What does that say? Revelation 11, 8. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt where also their Lord was crucified. A reference there to Jerusalem, yes. where the Lord was crucified. A famous city, but it is mystically called Sodom. Mm -hmm. In other words, the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah that we saw in Genesis 19 will manifest itself in the city streets of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, and if it could happen in God's city, it could happen in Sugarland, Texas, or right. Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, any other city of the world. In fact, let's just take Revelation 11, 7 through 10, where that prophecy is found, and let's read those in their entirety. All right. Revelation 11, 7 through 10. When they had finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Those from the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate, and they will send gifts to one another. Because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now, most prophecy teachers just look at that as technology. Isn't it great how the Bible predicts cable television and mm. how the whole world is going to see this event in the mm. city streets of Jerusalem? But there's a lot more to it than just the yes. technological yes. prediction. This is describing a moral or amoral mm -hmm immoral mindset that will envelop the earth in the last days. Yeah. The spirit of Sodom is mentioned there in verse 8. And notice how they treat these two witnesses. They, they're killed by the beast. Their bodies are just lying in the city streets. They're not given a proper burial. Now that shows disrespect. Oh my goodness, because yes. in the Bible, uh, when someone dies, you bury him. Mm -hmm. And remember what they did with Saul's body? They hung it from a wall. Right. 
out of disrespect. Mm -hmm. And so a lack of burial demonstrates a major lack of respect. And they actually celebrate yeah. the death of these two witnesses because it says here these two witnesses tormented them with their words, mm -hmm. meaning they were speaking things against their sodomite lifestyle. Right. Now, would that type of thing emerge in the end times? Would people in the LGBTQU, et cetera, lifestyle actually be disrespectful and gleeful at the death of somebody? Mm. Well, look no further than this uh, particular article from LGBTQNation.com. Mm. The title of it, June 8th, 2023. It's dealing with the recent death of Pat Robertson. Now, folks, I'm not here to defend every nook and cranny of Pat Robertson and what he said, but I always felt the man was a man of God, and he was mm -hmm. he was trying to you know honor uh, the God of the Bible to the best of of his ability. Look at what this article says, written by Alex Bollinger. The title of it is "It's Okay to Be Happy Now That Pat Robertson Is Dead." Mm -hmm. Um, is that not the type of spirit that we, we just saw in Revelation yeah, chapter 11? Yes, absolutely. So what we're saying is the technology for Revelation 11 is now in place, but the mindset yeah. that's demonstrated there, the amoral, immoral mindset that's demonstrated there is also in place. Help us with that article. Yeah, and we're just going to read a couple of sentences, but the whole article needs to be read at some point. Televangelist Pat Robertson one of the most powerful anti-LGBTQ plus voices of the 20th century who broadcast the 700 Club to millions for 60 years has died at the age of 93. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. And it's okay to celebrate. Yeah, and the article goes on and gives the reasons why this is a happy day. Oh, it's terrible. When Jerry Falwell, the late Jerry Falwell, passed away, I remember Christopher Hitchens, at that time well-known atheist, being interviewed, being also similarly gleeful to right. the point where the person interviewing him, I think it was Sean Hannity, I saw this on, says, shouldn't you give the family uh, you know, 24 hours to mourn? And Hitchens made some statement like, well, cry me a river, uh, a terrible demagogue, you know, mm. has just been removed. Mm. And now they're rejoicing over the death of uh, Pat Robertson. This is what they're going to do according to um, uh, Revelation chapter chapter 11. Yeah. Um, and this uh, Sodom second coming, as we call it, actually gets worse. Mm. Here is the New York from the Washington Examiner, June 12th, New York transgender guidance says schools should hide gender transition from parents. What does oh, that boy. say? New guidance from the New York State Education Department says school officials should keep parents in the dark about their child's gender identity if the student does not consent to inform them. Staff should call a student by the name and pronouns that correspond with the gender identity that the student claims. But when speaking to the student's parents, they should use the student's legal name and biological sex. So we're going to take your kids at taxpayer expense. We're going to teach them a worldview that's contrary to that of the parents to the point where we have the ability and permission to transition them to another gender and the parents don't have the foggiest idea what's going on. Right. And here New right. York in its public educational establishment is saying this is what's normal now. Yeah. Um, Sodom's mm. second coming. What mm. is thrown right out the window is Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. The great Hebrew Shema given 1,500 years before Jesus walked the face of the earth where God puts parents in authority over their own Amen. children. Remind us what that scripture says. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. 
These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. So who do you think we ought to follow, Brother Jim? Um, what Moses said 3,500 years ago or what the New York guidance educational system is saying? That's a tough one, <laughs> yeah. right? And if all of that, this is all related to this militant, in-your-face, yep. homosexuality, LGBTQI, etc., lifestyle, mm -hmm. manifesting at the end of the age. Here we have an article from Newsmax, June 20th, 2023, talking about Texas Christian University. I don't know what we do with that word mm. Christian there. Maybe we should put it in quotation mm. marks. Texas Christian University offers a course in drag, a drag course. Uh, what does that article say? Texas used to be Christian University <laughs> okay. offered a queer art of drag course for the spring 2023 semester that required students create drag personas and give a performance. The course was offered by the school's Women and Gender Studies Department and was taught by Dr. Nino Testa, also known by his drag persona, Maria Von Klapp. Quoting him, drag is an art form with a rich history of challenging dominant norms and systems of oppression, building queer community and cultivating experiences of queer joy in a hostile world. But drag has also been employed in service of violent violent uh, ideologies and can sometimes participate in harmful normative logics the course website said. So the days where you sent your kids to college to learn Christian values and to develop marketable skills, I guess, are over. Um, your child could could actually major in, in drag. Unbelievable. Take formal college classes in drag. Sodom's second coming. I at mean, a Christian university. At a Christian, suppose, university, suppose Christian university. And this is what Jesus mm. said would happen. It is. As it was in the days of, <laughs> of Lot, so shall it be one more... Fast article here, mm. uh, this one from the Daily Caller, June 20th, 2023. The Supreme Court of the United States declines a Christian college's appeal against a Biden rule on transgender yeah. housing. What does that article say? The Supreme Court declined to hear a Christian college's appeal in its lawsuit challenging the Biden administration's rule on transgender housing that would force female dormitories to house biological males. The College of the Ozarks filed its lawsuit in 2021 after HUD issued its directive in response to President Biden's executive order redefining sex discrimination to include sexual orientation and gender identity, effectively making it so transgender individuals must be housed within dorms corresponding to their self-declared gender. So we're going to force men into a women's college woman's dormitory if that male happens to identify as a female. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it through the force of law. Yeah. And Supreme Court, can you step in and hear our case? Sorry, no, no protection from you, for you, for the time being. Wow. So, you know, this, this uh, LGBTQU it, uh, mindset is being forced on us. And that's, sure what, that's what Jesus said would happen yeah. at the end of the age. Well, I hope you folks out there enjoyed <laughs> as much as you can this prophecy update for today as we've dealt with Gog, Magog, the kings of the East, the global economy. Mark of the Beast technology, global religion, and Sodom's uh, second coming. Brother Jim, do you have any good news for us? Thankfully, yes. Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So things are not falling apart. They're falling into place. Hallelujah. The world is growing gloriously dark. Yeah. 
And amidst the blackness, there's a promise that Jesus is going to return yes. to rescue his church yes. from the earth via the rapture before the wrath of God hits planet earth. And of course, people can enter into that promise by trusting in Christ alone Amen. for their salvation. They Amen. can do that now, um, even as we are speaking. Yes. Very, very quickly, just a few infomercials. I re remind folks to get the Andy Woods Ministries app. I also want to remind folks that this particular program and all of our pastor's points of view are available in podcast format. Just mm -hmm. go to wherever it is you get your podcast, type in Andy Woods Ministries into the search engine, and you can have that at your fingertips. I also want to remind people of the Hope for Our Times conference that's coming up in Rockwall, Texas. I'll be one of the speakers August 25th through the 26th. Also, I want to remind people of the Worldview weekend conference that's going, that's scheduled for October 20th through the 22nd, 2023. We'll have more to say about that as that conference gets closer. If you want to get the notes that we use uh, to put these broadcasts together, just go to the Andy Woods ministries website and there on the home page is a conspicuous way to sign up for our newsletter mm -hmm. so every time we post a pastor's point of view these show notes will show up for free in your inbox i yes. want to remind people that i'm the president of a school called chafer theological seminary go to our website if you could if you're interested in seminary education and brother jim uh, we're coming up on fourth of july Yes. I'm going to be giving my 4th of July weekend sermon this Sunday, which will be July 2nd, 2023. I believe I'm going to be teaching one of the most powerful messages the Lord has ever given me. Mm. The title of it is America Under the Judgment of God, question mark, wow. taken right out of Romans 1, verses 18 through 23. So go to the Sugarland Bible Church website or Facebook page to live stream that particular sermon. You gave a very powerful sermon last week. What was that about? Uh, it was about a proper attitude towards sin. Yeah, and if you want to hear the biblical reality of sin, go listen to Pastor Jim's message from last Sunday. That's all we have time for today. We thank you for listening, watching, caring, and sharing, and we'll see you next time. On and the praying. And praying, more, most importantly. <laughs> Have a great 4th of July weekend. Uh, think a lot about America's Christian roots and heritage yes. this weekend, yes. because without that, we wouldn't be a free people, Amen. would we? Amen. And so we'll see you next time on Pastor's Point of View. God bless you. God bless.